Um, so I'm Matt Hoekstrom, and uh, I, I put three email addresses at the bottom. Um, and the reason I did that, you'll notice that I've got an Apache email address. I have kind of the matt at hoekstrom.org address, and then I have a hoekstrom at us.ibm.com address, which means I'm confused at any moment of the day of who I am. And, and uh, you, might, you might say, well, why is that? So I just want to give you a, a quick overview of what I do. So I work at IBM, I'm based in RTP, uh, and I work in software group, specifically a group called Application Integration and Middleware. And what we do there is we build WebSphere, which is the you know, middleware that we hope fuels the internet um, and, and businesses internally. And at one point in the past, IBM did an acquisition where we bought a company called Glucode. And Glucode Software was um, involved at the ASF. It was a group of developers on a, a project called Apache Geronimo. And IBM wanted to step out into open source. And we wanted to get into the open source market. Um, and so we, we uh, had a chief competitor out there, which was JBoss. We also had Tomcat. Um, and so I'm being a little transparent about kind of the IBM perspective. And so with that in mind, it was, OK, let's go develop an open source. So Prior to that time, everything had been, you know, internal, proprietary. We did patents on everything, and that was kind of our, our focus. Now we were moving to open source, and we had to get involved at the Apache Software Foundation, and it was kind of a culture shift for a lot of the developers. And so um, through that process, I, the, the project that we worked on was called Apache Geronimo. And um, when I got involved in 2005, um, you know, we had to go through this initial process to become a committer, right? That's how you first join an Apache project. Um, that's where you actually get access to check in code, make changes to the project, and things of that nature. And we, we started learning about things like meritocracy and community and whatnot. And so, um, uh, just to, to fast pace you through it, so became a committer. Um, I got nominated to be on the PMC, which is the Project Management Committee. How many people um, are involved or familiar with Apache in terms of how committing and interacting with the community work. OK, so this is new to most everybody in the room. All right, so this is interactive. Feel free to ask any questions you want as I go through. Um, but basically, um, we went through that process. I got voted on to the PMC. The PMC, Project Management Committee, is kind of the, the oversight group for the project. They don't direct the project but they're responsible to the Apache organization to make sure that we've done all the right things with licensing, we, you know, nominating the community, keeping track of things and whatnot. Um, and when I was on the PMC, uh, we had this meeting out in San Francisco around Java 1. And that one meeting um, basically got a majority of us thrown off of the PMC. And the Apache Geronimo project was kind of hanging on by a thread. Now, this was not all my fault. So I was just, I was there. Um, but the interesting thing was it, was, it was a learning experience at Apache in terms of how Apache thinks, how Apache does things. And I'm proud to say that the, the Apache Geronimo project, I ultimately got reinstituted on the PMC along with a number of other folks. And this was IBMers and non-IBMers. Um, and then I became the, the uh, vice president of Apache Geronimo, which meant I was responsible for what we did on the PMC um, and ultimately, I left that group um, back in 2007 or 2008 and started working on some virtualization technology for WebSphere, which is related to what I do today. So what I wanted to do is just share with you some of my learning experience. Um, so maybe you can avoid some of the holes that I stepped in. Maybe what I can say best is I know what not to do, right? Now, so first thing, um, there's not a lot of rules in Apache. Uh, if you work in a corporation, you're used to this process. I got to do it this way. I got to talk to that person. This person's responsible for this, that, and the other thing. Apache doesn't really work that way. When you, when you get involved at Apache, you're going to find lots of documentation. And people that have written things on web pages and updated wikis about what do I do in the PMC? How do I create an account? How do I check in code? What's my licensing? In fact, if you ask three people what a particular rule is, you'll get five answers. And so the point is that Apache is very non-process oriented. It's just very fluid. But there is a culture 
with the notion of don't do any harm. It's about the community. Um, the, uh, this is the most important lesson we learned at Apache. Uh, when you get involved in the project, you think about the technology, you think about the deliverable, right? I'm going to put out my release, I'm going to put out the next piece of software. Um, but it's more about the people. Apache views the community to be preeminent, and the code is just a byproduct of what the community does together. And the reason that's important to remember that is when you get involved at Apache, whether you work for um, Citrix or IBM or Dell or whoever, you're actually joining Apache as an individual. You're not joining as an extension of the corporation. Your, your corporations don't have any standing at Apache. You have standing. You have standing based on what you do, what you contribute, how you interact. And so you have to take a step back and say, well, I'm not just working for Citrix or Citrix says this. No, Kevin says this. Bob says that. Sue says something else. It's the individuals that make up the community, both in terms of um, what you contribute and how you interact. And the other thing is, I remember I said about the PMC, this Project Management Committee. Anybody familiar with that term? Yeah? OK. I'll, let me run through some quick nomenclature. We have um, contributors. Those are people that kind of get involved, but they don't have access to code. They don't check in. They don't do a lot of things. And we have committers. Those are people that are writing code. They're actively checking things in. And then you have the Project Management Committee, or PMC member. And like I said, the PMC is that group that, that's responsible for the community. They're responsible to make sure that the community is operating well. They don't direct the project. It's not like you have to go to the PMC and say, hey, do you mind if I do this? Well, no, you get to do it because you're a committer. But the PMC will look out and say, hey, you know, I saw this guy named Fred, and he has committed like 70 different patches. And they're all really good quality. I think he's a really good candidate to become part of the project. And the PMC members would end up saying, having a little conversation, saying, OK, let's vote. If the PMC votes him in, the PMC makes the recommendation to the Apache board that we want to accept this person as a committer into our pro or they, they accept the person as a committer into the project. The, the um, community itself, I mean, you can initiate anything as a committer. The PMC is not like this super um, group that you're accountable to that you have to get direction from. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, every project is unique. And so when I say you go to Apache and you'll find that, um, you know, what's the rule? What do I need to do for documentation? How do I structure my comments? How do I structure my code? That's up to the project. It's up to the people that are contributing. And it's up to you guys, right, as you get involved in CloudStack. Um, the, uh, how do you vote new committers in? How do you do your documentation? When do you do your releases? Um, some projects just kind of say, hey, I want to do a release. No one objects. They go ahead and build it, get a vote, and then they send out the code. And that's basically it. Some projects are really organized. They've got people that say, hey, I want to do a release once every quarter. Right? We've got a user community out there that's expecting that. They'd actually like to see kind of a roadmap. They'd like to see a pipeline. What's coming? What are we thinking about? And so communities may be very organized. And again, the community at CloudStack will determine that not the employees at Citrix. It'll be probably the employees at Citrix that'll set the tone um, to start with, because there's lots of folks on the committer list from Citrix, but it's up to the community. So there's no right way or wrong way to decide how you want to do a release. So first of all, pause. Do you guys have any questions yet? Does this all make perfect sense? Stun silence. All right. Um, I already said this, but I'll emphasize it again. You don't work for Citrix, and Citrix has zero standing. Dell has zero standing. IBM has zero standing at Apache. It's the individuals, right? Back to my conflicted set of emails. Um, I'll tell you a, a funny story about uh, Apache Geronimo. Um, so we were kind of in competition with this JEE app server with 
the IBM WebSphere product and JBoss. And we got to a point in the project where we wanted to beat JBoss to JEE certification. It's a, a certification level for JEE programming, if you're familiar with it. Um, but the community really, really wanted to beat JBoss. That was really important. And so we had lots of different projects at Apache that we were getting code from. We got some from MyFaces, we got some from CXF, we got some from um, Axis. And we got to a point where the folks at one of the Apache projects, CXF, which was not strategic for IBM, said, we will help you deliver. And those guys started coding like crazy. They integrated with us. And at IBM, I had like this hat thing I had to keep changing. And so internally at IBM, I was told, you can't use that. That's not good for IBM. We're, we're voting for the other project. And so when the vote came up, I voted to go with the guys that were doing the work, which was contrary to what IBM wanted to have voted. And the reason I say that is because I have to look everyone that, at Apache in the eye and say, yeah, I'm focused on what the community's doing, not on what the guys that are paying me do. And so you may end up in a situation where you have to make some choices like that. Um, so be prepared for it. It's probably not going to be as dramatic, perhaps, as I, I was explaining it. But that conflict actually did come up, where we had, a, had an internal meeting at IBM about what we were doing, and someone said, you will not do that. And I went ahead and did it anyway and we beat them. In fact, the cool thing was we actually beat the proprietary WebSphere team certification at the same time. And they weren't happy about that. Um, the other thing is everyone's contribution is important. Um, in the Apache Geronimo project, there was this kind of notion that in order to become a committer, you had to be like a coding rock star. You had to be turning out lots of code, it had to be really complicated, and you had to know your stuff. And so that actually created an artificial barrier for people to actually get involved in the project. Because people would come and they'd say, I want to get involved. And it's like, ah, well, go code JEE spec, whatever, and people would get lost. And so you know, we had people over time where we kind of rethought the way we were thinking and said, you know, the guy, there's a guy that's like doing all of our documentation. He's out there changing the wiki all the time. He's deploying things. He's learning how to use the product he's made, or the, the uh, code. And he's using how to, see, this is, I get all confused, right? It's a product. Oh, no, it's a uh, project. Um, and so we ended up voting him in as a committer. The guy didn't write a single line of code. We had other people that did testing. Some people did certification. Um, and so we realized that the community was made up of a much broader spectrum of con contributors than just the coders. So remember that there are people out there that you want to invite into the community. The second thing, and this goes back to what I talked about with the, the project management committee, there is one way to make sure no one ever joins your community. That is to let them put patches in and never do anything with them. Well, what happens a lot of times is you're working on your piece over here, some guys submitting patches, it's like, well, that takes my time to go look at his patches to get them integrated. Meanwhile, this guy that's trying to get involved is not getting any love, right? Well, I'm doing all this work and no one's really doing anything or acknowledging me. So the point is be aware, right? Look at the emails, even the ones that may not be directly related to you, and, and look at the broader community, right, as committers or contributors or even PMC members on the project. It's so ultimately the PMC member's responsibility to make sure the community is operating well. And that means that probably they have to step out and say, ah, let me go take that patch from Joe and try applying it. Hey, Joe, that worked. Or Joe, that's not quite right. We do it this way. Can you rework it? Right? Give them some coaching. Also, if somebody comes and says, hey, you know, I, I want to get involved, but I don't know what to do. You know, give them something to do. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be super but welcome the, the broader community. Um, I already said that. The PMC doesn't run the project. The community does. Um, the community runs, at least for Apache Geronimo, I expect this will be the same for just about every Apache project. The projects are actually run through email. Um, in fact, Apache Geronimo, we hated any kind of email that had you know, 
graphics and things like that in it because typically people would go run through um, the email archives to look at conversations, to look at discussions, to look at architecture, to see what decisions had been made. Much easier to do that with just text. If you want to do graphics and things like that, it's great. And again, this is a community decision. But we basically would have people post stuff off on the wiki and then just refer to it in the email. So the email provides a kind of um, constant archive for the project. This is my favorite. Abstain from any appearance of evil. Right? That's good biblical advice and it's good development advice too. Um, so how did we almost get thrown out of Apache? So we had this project or we're working on Apache Geronimo and Java 1 was coming up. Big, big, you know, um, event for any of the EE developers. And so it turned out that some of the committers kind of secretly or quasi-secretly organized a group to get together. But what they didn't do is they didn't put it out on the mailing list. And they didn't do that because they specifically didn't want to invite a couple of people. And so what ended up happening is there was this group get-together. In fact, most of the people that were at the get-together kind of knew that it wasn't really organized, it wasn't well broadcast. In fact, that some people had personality conflicts. But what happened was most everybody didn't say anything. And so what ended up happening is we had a couple of people that got really offended that they were excluded from the community. And that was when the, the um, Apache board decided to reorganize the PMC, throw off everybody that was on it, well, most of us. Um, and, and some people didn't actively do anything wrong. But the fact that somebody got excluded appears to be really bad. Most of the people didn't even mean to do it. There were a couple individuals that were you know, kind of dealt with, but again, it came back to the community. So make sure that you're aware, you're thinking, is that right? Did we communicate that well? In fact, one of the big problems we have with IBM, um, and you may have as you're working in groups at your companies, is you have kind of an internal discussion, right? You go by, hey, let me whiteboard this with you, let's try doing this, etc. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And not a single email ever gets sent out to the community. So all of a sudden, a pile of code shows up, and people are like, oh, what's that? That doesn't make any sense. I think we should do this. And then all of a sudden, you have kind of a, oh, but we decided that in the office. It's like, what office? Aren't you part of the community? So be aware of that. Um, tangible things, um, make sure you're, you're including everybody. So when you're having the, the boot camp um, for CloudStack, my, my initial thought was back to San Francisco in 2006 when we all got in trouble. Um, and so now here we are in San Jose. Um, one of the things that'll be great, I know you guys are recording the, the, discuss, the um, discussion and whatnot, you know, make sure you get notes out to the community. Hey, here's what we did in the, the boot camp today. Here's the things that we covered. You know, a lot of this is just kind of, I'll say, knowledge transfer. It's kind of giving more information out. But keep everybody involved. I know, at least for us on Geronimo, we had people in Australia, in Italy, um, down in uh, New Zealand, folks over in Europe all over the world. And the big problem was everybody's in different time zones. So again, email becomes that common denominator for you to be able to make sure that you're sharing with the larger community. Um, email threads also give you your best source of history. Why did we make that decision? Oh, back there. And it helps people to do searching before they ask questions on the list that have already been answered. It right? gives other people an opportunity to go back and look historically. Um, I said, pay, talk about paying attention to people that are interested in helping out and make sure, in fact, you know, it's like your house. You've got a, like a big long to-do list of things that you want to get done. You know, maybe your kid wants some responsibility and you're afraid, oh, maybe they, they can't do it as good as I can, so I'll just hang on to that. Keep your to-do list so you can hand that out to folks in the community. Avoid clicks. Um, you know, perhaps it's just part of human nature, but, you know, try not to end up where I, the three of us are always doing this together and we really don't include anybody in that area, right? You want to try, again, try to keep it open. That's the big, the big uh, mantra at Apache. Um, I don't know, do you guys have use IRC at all? Yeah, is it, is it like pound cloud stack or something? Okay, all right. Um, 
IRC is great. You get little bots to keep track of the IRC sessions. Don't make decisions in IRC because not everybody's on IRC. Everybody gets emails. Again, that idea, you're going to collaborate there. Maybe you might summarize a discussion, but make sure you get it out to email so you don't have to exclude anybody. And the last one is really have fun. Um, it sounds kind of silly, but um, the reason I'm here today isn't because this is CloudStack and it does anything good for IBM, although actually I think I hope it will. Um, I told you I left Apache Geronimo a couple years ago, and I've been working on you know, cloud and related technologies, so this is kind of related to what I'm doing, so I'm very excited. There's a project actually aligned with what I'm doing during the day, so I'm hoping to get involved. Um, but I'm here actually because I care about the ASF. Um, the ASF's a really kind of special organization. It, it's not, it, it's, I think there's three or 400 members today. And membership is based on invitation. And so we actually have a, a meeting coming up where it's kind of our annual members meeting. We go through nominations for the board, we elect folks for treasurer and things. But there's always the, who's the new member nominations, right? And those are the people that, you know, they've been active and then they show a proclivity for the ASF, for that kind of open development, that community. Um, and so those are the folks that get invited uh, to be members. And then you end up you know, being a member for life unless you get bored or want to retire or go emeritus or whatever. But enjoy it. You know, I've been active in the Apache Incubator with different projects, and I'm really not doing anything on except to be involved with them, help spur them along, give them advice, counsel, that kind of thing. So um, enjoy yourselves. Um, so hopefully, I know you're going to do it because you get paid, probably. Um, but do it because it's fun, because that will end up showing through in the work that you do. So Apache, like I said at the very beginning, doesn't have any real rules. There's no real process. Um, so does anybody have any questions about Apache or how they work or you know, what you should or shouldn't do that I can answer for you while I'm here today? Yeah. Speak from your diaphragm. Yeah, right here in the front. I'm crossing my eyes so you can't tell where I'm looking. Go ahead. Yes, you. Ooh, great question. So how do you get out of the incubator? The incubator is kind of like jail, right? Um, so maybe I'll tell you what the incubator is about, right? The incubator is really exactly what it sounds like. It's a place to germinate a new project. And it is to show that the project is capable of managing itself, takes the responsibilities of source code licensing, community, et cetera, reporting um, seriously. And eventually, you get out from underneath the, what we call the incubator PMC, which oversees all incubator projects. So for instance, I'm on the incubator PMC. Um, and once you graduate, you basically show that you can do it, and you get to a point where you're tired of having to ask permission. You just want to go talk to the board yourselves and say, hey, we want to vote in a new PMC member, or we're going to do this, or here's our report. Um, so you can be in the incubator for as little as a couple of months. And then we've had some that have been in there for years. The process is once the community has decided that they've grown up and they want to be on their own, they basically put together a proposal to the board saying, we would like to move to top level project status. We call it TLP. Um, and then the incubator PMC will say, yep, yeah, we agree. We'll make that recommendation to the board. Then the board will approve it. Then you'll get your own top level project and you can remove incubator from all your emails and all that other stuff. So that's basically the process. It's really simple. Yes? Yeah, so again, it goes back to the kind of the community. So you're going to decide that when you're in the incubator, right? Who's really involved? What do you care about? Um, if, you, if you want to be highly process oriented as a project, you know, God bless you. Um, if you want to be kind of shoot from the hip, that's okay too. Um, what will end up happening is if the, you know, you got the group over here that wants to just do the coup foray, whatever we want to do, and the other group that says, no, no, you've got to fill out this form first. 
that's not a healthy community. So you have to figure out the right balance, but there's no formula for that apart from the people that are contributing and being active in the project. Right? And big projects, you need structure, right, to, to some extent to be able to manage it. Yeah, so don't do what we did in Geronimo. That was, that was kind of a big project. Um, but I am happy to say that the whole community is, it's, almost, it's a model community now, right? So um, stay open and listen to everybody and you know, allow people to contribute wherever they can. And you'll be successful, right? And then that, that's from a community standpoint. And then the code and the consumers and the users of that you know, that'll tell based on the quality of the product that you put out or the project you put out. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Speak from your diaphragm. I have to share something very personal with you. I am deaf in my left ear, which okay. means two things. I can't tell who's talking, and I cannot tell where a screaming child is in my house. So go ahead. Okay. So maybe it's difficult to answer this one, but maybe you can try. What are the measures for a, for, for a successful incubation, like quantitative or qualitative, if you can think of any concrete? Um, uh, quantitative measures for successful incubation are, um, we form what we call a PPMC in the incubator. That's, that we call that the practice PMC. Mm -hmm. um, and that's made up of kind of the mentors, as well as the, the initial committers and, and folks. Um, for instance, it's up to the project whether everybody's on the PMC or only a small number of people are on the PMC. Some people really don't care. I just want to do documentation. I don't care about that stuff. I don't want to file reports or any of that kind of thing. Um, a measure of a, a successful project is, one, it's got diversity. So for instance, um, IBM dominated Apache Geronimo for a long time, and so there was concern that if IBM pulled out, the project would fold. And so diversity is an important um, indicator of whether it's time to leave the incubator or not. Um, am I bringing in new committers? Am I you know, doing that kind of thing? Uh, have I voted people onto the PMC? Um, am I filing you know, kind of updates on time? I, I say filing reports. It sounds so structured. Um, it's basically, hey, we you know, had a, a release last quarter and we voted in Bob as a committer. Okay, good. That's a good report. Um, it doesn't have to be super structured. It's really to see if the project's doing something, right? Not the code is sitting there, nobody's doing anything, I haven't released anything. So another measure is you've done a couple of releases. So you've gone through the process of packaging the code, getting it signed, um, those kinds of things. Uh, but a lot of it's just basically doing the things that a normal project does and then without any issues, then you graduate. Okay, uh, quick second question. As a PM, uh, incubation PMC, uh, is it like a success criteria for you that the project gets finally accepted or elevated, or that's not really your role? Um, oh, you mean is it up to me to see that the project makes it through to top level? No, I mean, uh, let's say, you will consider your, your role successful when the project makes it to the top level, or that's not really I'll easy. consider my role successful when it goes one way or the other. Okay. It'll, it'll go, it'll, See, well, but I, and I mean that seriously, because I, I'm a I mentor for a couple of projects, and one of the projects I'm a mentor for in the PMC is they're just not doing anything with the community. They haven't voted in any committers. The same guys, com, you know, committing the code, which are predominantly from one organization, and so I'm concerned that they're not, they don't have the diversity, they're not doing the community. And so I, I've been sending them kind of nasty gram notes saying, hey, I've been mentoring you for three years and I guess it's not working. So you guys want to pull the plug? God bless you, go do something else, or you want to get engaged and, and move forward. And so then they said, oh, well, absolutely we want to get engaged, and then they haven't done anything. So, um, uh, but I, I see it successful either way. But obviously, I, I would be you know, most pleased if the community takes off. You've got um, all of the right pieces for, for Apache. And I'll do my part to, to uh, you know, prod and poke and, and uh, remind and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Okay. Oh, one last thing. Private emails, they're really not good. And so um, 
what you want to avoid, and this is kind of back to that community thing, you know, don't send a note to four guys on the list and talk about somebody and then say, oh, the four of us decided we want to do this. You know, I've already mentioned that before, but that, that's one of the big things. Make sure everything's out in the open. That'll be um, key. Yes. Hey, uh, I had uh, two questions, actually. Okay. Um, you had mentioned two things. The first is that there are ne really no rules. And the second thing is that the PMC doesn't drive uh, the decisions, but uh, the community does. Right. So uh, I think um, basically my two questions are these. How is consensus achieved on anything? And uh, so for example, if a, a patch has to be put in, or if a project design decision has to be made, mm -hmm. uh, how is consensus achieved? And the second question is, is, is it different for different things? Uh, for, for major decisions, uh, does it have one way of doing, of uh, getting done versus the other? Okay, so um, I'm going to restate what I said about there's no rules. Um, there's lots of rules. We just don't follow all of them exactly the same all the time, right? Um, there's expectations, I think. Um, one of the expectations is how do I put code in? Um, there's actually two modes of operation at Apache. There's commit then review, we call that CTR, or there's review then commit. Um, it depends on the community on how they want to approach it. Review then commit is obviously a lot more rigid. They're going to submit a patch, they're going to have people review it, then you kind of agree if you want to put it in or not. Um, commit then review is like, I'm just firing code in and people can see it, right? You get the commit messages out of the repository. Um, so that's how you get the code in. Um, if you want to do review, then commit, then you can do this kind of consensus thing. It's up to you. The way consensus is typically done in Apache projects, we have a, a voting methodology. It's either plus one, I agree, zero, don't really care. I've seen minus zero and plus zero, which is, I guess is a little bit more than zero or less than zero. Um, and then there's minus one, I disagree, right? Um, and if you're making a vote, um, you're looking for consensus, but that doesn't mean it's unanimous. So, you know, you could have a, uh, someone that says, hey, I want to put in this new module related to networking, and I'm going to pull, pull in a new load balancer or something, right? Now, it would probably be very bad if there was a bunch of people from Citrix that all voted minus one, and a bunch of other people that said, you know, voted plus one. That would look like you're voting as a block, right? Vote your individual contribution, your, your conscience, if you will. Um, but that's the way that votes are typically done. Depending on the community, it's really going to be how you guys decide a big major architectural shift takes place in the project. And so if you feel that um, you know, adding a new module or a new package is important, maybe you want to vote on that. But the community will end up deciding that. Um, and I would err on you know, let the code flow. Um, and then deal with, you know, bad code or, or issues like that, you know, with folks. Actually, this is another bad thing at Apache. Um, again, it's based on the community. But um, it's considered bad form generally to just go in and revert a bunch of a person's commits. You know, saying, yeah, you know what, I don't like your commits. I'm reverting them all. That's, that's typically bad. There should be a conversation that happens around that, right, uh, before you end up doing it. So... Um, it's up to the community, but plus one, minus one, or zero. You know, zero is kind of, I'm ambivalent. Okay, anybody else? Okay. So, um, w one quick question. Yes. What questions should a group that, you know, has largely come from uh, an internal development group be asking and be concerned about, especially from a cultural shift perspective? Because I don't know that there is enough I don't know that we know what, that we know what we don't know. So tell us what we should what we should be asking you, and and what you're surprised that we haven't asked you. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put on my IBM hat for a minute. Um, the most important thing that anybody needs to have, um, if they're working on the project and they're employed by somebody, is the support of the management with an understanding of how open source works. So you know, management that's saying, hey, here's our goals, here's what we want to do, and this is why we're involved in the project, or this is why you're involved in the project. Um, you know, I could talk all egalitarian, like, you know, you guys are going to live in cardboard boxes behind, you know, um, Starbucks because you just love coding for free, but I don't believe that's true for anybody. 
Um, so you're doing it for a reason. Probably you like it, hopefully. Um, but the management should be engaged and understand what you're doing in open source. And management should understand that they don't own everybody's decision. It's a community thing. Um, and maybe it's not for anybody in the room, but that, that's a really big, important part with the management piece. Um, the other one is to make sure that you're not um, following the, there's four of us on the room, we're all working and talking and whiteboarding and not communicating. Um, those are probably the two big things um, that I would think you'd have to be concerned about. Um, so long as you're, you're avoiding all that, you should be in what I like to refer to as fat city. So, any other questions? All right, be fruitful and multiply and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>